Hey, family. It's good to see you all this morning. Shout out to Paisley. It was great to see you guys a couple weeks ago. Shout out to Fiona. Fiona Keatings is watching right now. So, yeah, I, 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 yeah, that was a lot more than Paisley. Now I feel bad for Paisley. Paisley, we love you. We love you too. Paisley, yeah, I love you too. Fiona would, would murder me if I didn't mention that she is excited to come back and we're starting Scotland Bible School this, this autumn. And uh, you can check out on the website, scotlandbibleschool.com, if you want to see more about what that's about. But it's basically studying the whole Bible over a three-year period, uh, cover to cover, a magnificent. You can see more about that. But you're not going to do that right now. You are, probably. But I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you as we get ready to dive in today. I bless you now in the name of Jesus, that you would know Jesus more wonderfully today. I bless you to receive healing if you need healing in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, in your spirit today. I bless you to receive whatever guidance from God you need today, whatever help from God you need immediately. And I bless you to have the resilience and capacity to flourish and prevail over whatever challenges you're facing in your life right now. And I bless you to feel hope and joy and love and peace, whatever is going on. I bless you with that. In the name of Jesus, may it be. Amen. All right, family, welcome back to our series in Ephesians chapter 6. We're talking about putting on the full armor of God so that we can stand unshaken and unshakable in any or every evil or awful day. The, the, the heart behind this series is I don't want the enemy to blow up your life anymore. I want a great future for you where you are strong in the Lord, I want where you are full of peace on the inside, where you're overflowing with joy that just can't help but, but come out of you. I want you to be happy, and I want you to be happy because you know how to not just survive in difficult days, but how to thrive. And you're like, is that possible? It is very possible. That's what we're talking about today, how to thrive in any challenging, evil, or awful day. Now, because it's been a few weeks, I'm just going to remind us where we've been in our study as we've been looking at Ephesians chapter 6. And so I'll just read to you, starting in verse 10, where, where we've been in this study. What do you do with this when you don't need it? You just kind of zoop around there. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. It says this, finally... Be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. Now, the, the, right at the beginning we talked about the context is very important for us to know. The context of our life and reality. The context is the enemy is real. The enemy is real. That is our context. Peter says our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking Someone to devour from Genesis to Revelation. We get this consistent message that all, that all that we see and all that we experience isn't all that there is. But that there is a very, a very real spiritual war going on and you are impacted by it. You are very much in the middle of it. There's a real enemy that's trying to blow up your life. There is a real God who loves you and cherishes you and is full of all sort of goodness. The, Jesus says in, in John chapter 10 that the thief, the enemy, the thief, comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. Jesus has come that we might have life and, and life to the full. But we, we find out that the enemy is a liar. The enemy is an accuser. The enemy is a, a thief. The enemy is vicious and shameless in his work to try and crush the life out of you, the joy out of you, the peace out of you, the, the, uh, the faith out of your souls. So that's, that's our context here. But the good news is that that doesn't need to be our reality. We can be strengthened in the Lord and we can put on the full armor of God so that we can stand. Not just endure, but that we can, we can stand by putting on all of the armor of God. What is all of the armor? Where, well, some of this stuff we've talked about, starting in verse 14, said, Stand, therefore, with truth, like a belt around your waist, 
righteousness like armor on your chest and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. And so we talked uh, for a few weeks there. Number one, we talked about how we start our stand with truth, how the enemy is a liar and, and this enemy is, it's, is lying to you. And so what we want to do is we need to go back to the very simple truths that we know about God in the Bible. We go back to those simple truths and we start our stand in truth, resisting the work of the liar. Secondly, we talked about righteousness and we, how we continue to stand in righteousness, how the enemy is an accuser and how day and night he's accusing you before the throne of God in heaven and how he accuses you um, with, with guilt and shame and he just her, throws in your face all the mistakes you've made and tries to convince you that you are unworthy. You're unworthy. Well, Jesus makes you worthy and so we, we grab on to that but also we resist the, the attempts uh, to to throw us down by the enemy by walking in righteousness. That helps mitigate that attack. Thirdly, we talked about how we stand ready against any attack of the enemy by standing in peace. Standing in peace. The enemy knows that anxiety and, wor and worry make you the easiest target for all that he wants to do with you. If, if you are anxious or worried, the enemy has a wide open door to just mess with you. Just, just totally, just totally, um, yeah, wind you up. And yet, it's nearly impossible for the enemy to blow up your life if you're standing firmly in peace. Not peace because of just any old reason. Peace rooted in believing the gospel. A peace rooted in Jesus. So we've talked about those three pieces of the armor of God, and today we come to the fourth one. That's, that's our, our recap, having been a, taken a few weeks off here. Here's the fourth one that we, we're going to be talking about today. It says this, starting in, in verse 16. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I'm going to read that again. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So how can we, how can we um, keep from getting our lives blown up by the enemy? Faith in every situation. Faith in every situation. That, that's how it started in, in this verse. In every situation, take up the shield of faith, in every situation, and I'll just make it really easy for us all. Every means every. <laughs> every means every. You don't have to waste any time. Is this situation a God thing, or is this an enemy thing, or is this just a life thing? In every situation, faith is the right thing to take up. Wh whatever's going on there. For, for example, my mortgage just went up. I'm not the only one in the room. My mortgage went up, which meant that my, my um, expendable money went down. Like that. Like, like that. You know how that, that's, a, that's a super fun, fun reality. Is that an enemy attack against my life? No. It is, it is, it's, a, it's a reality. It's definitely not a direct enemy thing. What is the right response? Faith. The right response is faith. Because although maybe the enemy didn't raise my mortgage, he's probably going to want to use it to wind me up. He's probably going to want to use it to, to, to be like, oh, you're, you're in, you're, your expendable money has gone down. Let's get stressed. Let's freak out. Let's crumble on the inside. Let's go, let's, let's live our lives with panic and fear and obsession with, 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 with all the awful things. Let's worry. Let's get anxious. Let's get full of fear. You know, like, he's just going to want to wind me up. Like, I, I'm sure I'm the only one that he wants to do that with. But the reality is, in, in every situation, whether the enemy has set it up or, or he just wants to use it, in every situation, we're supposed to take up faith. Faith is the right thing to take up. Okay, so faith. Okay, take up the shield of faith, right? Okay, so Brian, what is faith? Th this to me is the most simple definition, and I, I get it out of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, but my simple definition of faith is this. Faith is believing. 
Faith is believing. I believe it. I actually believe it. Faith is believing. Believing what? Believing all that God said about himself is true. Believing that all that God said about me is true. Believing that all that God said about the relationship between me and God and God and me is true. That all, like be, believing that it's, it's true in every situation. Believing that God can be trusted. So kind of a, my, one of my journeys, one of my, one of my fun things is, um, so I, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes I write messages and I teach. I, I preach sometimes. So uh, it's, it's a company. Thursdays is message writing day. Thursdays is usually, and I don't want to speak this over myself, but one of my least favorite days because it is a day t- where the enemy is just trying to bombard me with fear and anxiety over what is going to happen on Sunday. He wants to wind me up. He wants to be like, you're going to have nothing to say. Or if you do say something, it's going to be stupid. Or it, it, just, it just starts like, uh, what, what, if, what if you just spend all day and you get nothing done and you're, and you're not? You, uh, I always get something done. The, the enemy just wants to wind me up. I've realized that I'm, I, I have a propensity towards stress eating. This Sunday, I, or this Thursday, I, w- I was sitting there, and I'm like, man, I am so hungry. I'm, I'm writing along, right at this point of the message. I'm like, we're so hungry right now. It must be like way after lunch. It was 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> Just like, oh, a little square of dark chocolate, and, and kept on typing. But, but the, this, the, the enemy wants to wind me up. At, at, is there any time in the past where I haven't been able to draft up a message? No, every time, and yet decades the enemy wants to just try and wind wind me up and then sunday mornings sometimes uh who knows how i'm gonna feel about the message before i get up to speak like well you you would just assume oh brian it's gonna be fine brian's not feeling that sometimes so (laughs) sometimes brian is in the back being like oh no uh it's not sticking in my head i i don't even know what if i can't remember what if i get up there what if i blank i mean I've got the notes right in front of me. What if I, what if my, why am I worried about if my mind blanks? I just look down. Huh. Oh, that's okay. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll be like, oh, man, what's, what's so-and-so going to think about this? Oh, probably Archie and our Archie out in Paisley is going to be judging me on this one. No, no, he's, he's a good guy. He's not judging me on this one. Uh, but, like, like just what, what, what's going on? What, what, like, what, like, all this, like, wind-up sort of thing. So sometimes I find myself standing back there and, 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 getting ready to walk up and preach, and the enemy's just winding me up. And so what do I do? And this is the question. How have I learned to pick up the shield of faith in my own enemy stress, worry, bombardment? How have I learned to pick up the shield of faith so that I don't get blown up by these attacks? How do I, how do I, how do, I do that? And here's the phrase I use often. How do I win the war in my mind? How do I win the war of my mind? How do I win that war so that I'm, I'm not letting myself get blown up? There's four steps that I do all of the time when it comes to picking up the shield of faith so that the enemy just can't have a free-for-all blast Brian to bits on, on the inside fest. Nobody, wants, nobody likes that game. So how do I pick up my shield of faith so that I can stand and I not get blown up by stupid insecurities or stupid faithlessness? Okay? Here's the things I do all the time, any day, for any situation, whether it comes to teaching or or anything like that. Number one, I rebuke. I rebuke. Shamelessly. I rebuke the enemy for his attack against me. I I recognize that it is very likely that it is spiritual. I can't, I'm not guaranteeing that it's spiritual, but it's very likely that it's spiritual. And so I just, I just start rebuking every unclean spirit who's which harassing me right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. A- and I say, leave me alone. Get away from me in the name of Jesus. Stop lying to me. Stop messing with me. Stop messing with my emotions. I shut you down and I shut you out in the name of Jesus. I say, you can't mess with me. Don't, don't mess with me now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke those faithless feelings that I have. Doubt. Get away from me in the name, get out of me in the name of Jesus. Insecurities, no, no insecurities. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Insecurities, you get out of me in the name of Jesus. You come out now, you, I forbid you to mess with me anymore or fear or stress or anxieties or worries. I just rebuke you and I, I send you out in the name of Jesus. What if 
I rebuke the enemy from messing with me. And it isn't the enemy. It's just life. It's just me. Big whoop de doo <laughs> I'm, I'm just, who cares? Like, it's, it's not a problem if I over-rebuke and there's nothing there. I just, I just do that and I just make sure that there's nothing spiritual messing with me. The last thing I need is more help being anxious or worried, right? And I just make sure that that's, that that's not messing with me and then I go on to step two. Step two is I remember. I remember. What is it about God that I need to remember right now? What is it about what God says about me that I need to remember right now? What is it that God says about me in these kind of circumstances that I need to remember right now? What is it that God says he feels and his connection to me and vice versa, me to him, in these circumstances right now? As I said before, faith is believing. Faith is believing what you believe. Faith is believing what you believe, believing that what God says is how it is. So, Brian, by faith, do you believe right now in your strain and in your stress that God is real and God is here? Do you believe what you believe about that? Yes, you believe that he's here, but do you believe what you believe? Do you believe that he's with you in this, in this moment of stress and anxiety and worry and fear and doubt? That, well, the Bible's clear that God is here and that God is with me. In fact, his spirit indwells in me. It, he, I am as close to God as possible. He is, he is here. He is here. He's not just around. He is here. Do I believe what I believe? Brian, by faith, do you believe that God is active? That he's willing to help you right now? Do you believe that he's aware of your current challenges and he has compassion on you in your situation? The Bible is is clear that God has compassion on all that he has made, that he's entirely attentive and he's entirely aware. The enemy is like, he's probably not paying attention to you. No, but do you believe what you believe? Do you believe what the Bible says? Okay, yes. Brian, by faith, do you believe that you are loved by God, that you are cherished by God, that you are precious to God, that you are chosen by God to be a part of his family? The Bible is clear. I am loved. The Bible is clear. You are loved. The Bible is clear that I am cherished by God. The Bible is clear that you are cherished by God and precious to him, purchased at the greatest price to be brought into his family. Faith is believing what you believe. And so I have to remind myself, what do I believe right now? What do I really believe about what's going on? I'm not alone. God is with me. It's not going to be, my my day is not going to be about chance. But God is with me. By the way, sometimes, if if I'm, uh, rarely I get here, but like every once in a while I show up on Sundays and I have not won the war in my mind effectively enough yet. And I will be back there, and I'll be like, oh, my goodness, what? And I'm just, so, I, I just feel the anxieties up there and, and, and just worried and whatever. Today I was a little bit too chill. I was a little bit, I was so worried, that, I was so relaxed today uh, that I was back there. I'm like, oh, maybe I should get, look at my notes one more time. And I'm like, I can't even be bothered. The worship is happening, and it's just, just a great moment, and I'm, I'm loving all this uh, then the enemy's trying to wind me up. You should be more stressed. No, no, I'm, I'm just going to worship right now. But sometimes I'm back there, and, and, and I, might be, I might be worried. And you know, what the, you know what Jesus has done to bring that final breakthrough sometimes? He has given me a glimpse of how much he cares about you. It's like he just peels back the curtain a little bit. Brian, I care about that. You don't even know what this person's week's been like. You don't even know how much I care about where, where this person's life journey is, where they're stuck, where they're hurting, where they're, where you're never gonna, they're never gonna tell you this or that sort of thing. Like, I see everybody in this room. Get past yourself and just let, just get talking, just talk. There, there's things that I have for them. And besides, Brian, if I can speak through a donkey, I can speak through you. <laughs> works every time. Work, works every time. Oh, anyways. Uh, faith, faith is believing. Faith is believing. I wish you could see, though. I wish you could really cherish just how much God is paying attention to you. He brought you here for a reason. It's pretty special. 
The third thing I do after remembering is reset. I reset. Again, faith is believing. I know that God is with me. Now, there's a lot of examples of reset in the Bible. Um, one of the ones that I think about all the time is in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and it's about David. So David is having a very bad moment. Uh, it's, it's an, is it an enemy moment? Is the enemy attacking him, or is he just having a bad moment because of life sometimes has bad moments? The Bible doesn't tell us. He's having a bad moment, though. He's returning to his town. He's been given a town, Ziklag. He's returning to this town, and when he returns, it's entirely destroyed. It's been burned up, and all of his kids and wives, all the wives of all of his hundreds of soldiers and all the kids of all of his hundreds of soldiers have been kidnapped. The Amalekites have attacked. They've burned down his town. They've taken all the wives. They've taken all the kids. They've taken all the sheepies, all the goats, all the money. They've burned every, all the houses down. There is, like, everything that they have ever scrounged together in all the years of their lives has been stolen and taken away. So David's experiencing this. That's not a great thing. Not only that, his men are so distraught and upset that their kids and wives have been kidnapped and all and everything that they've lost everything that they're they're ready to stone David. They're, they're ready to kill him. Throw stones at him until he's dead. They, they, this is they are so mad. And so David is feeling the devastation of this, and he is feeling like the threat of, of all these, these angry soldiers. And what does he do? He resets. And the Bible says. He strengthened himself in the Lord. And what he did is he went to God. He got God's perspective about his situation. And then he stepped back forward and he led the people to go rescue the families and the stuff. But he reset. Another great example is the book of uh, Habakkuk. The, the whole thing is this great uh, reset process where the, the prophet is like, God, everything's awful. And, and he's like, God's like, I got a plan. I'm going to make it worse. And he's like, you're going to do what? And, and, and God's like, just trust me in this. I, I've got a plan. And so the, the prophet Habakkuk does a reset. And he's like, okay, even if the absolute worst things that I can imagine take place in my life, I will rejoice in the Lord. He's reset. He's not just, I will endure. I will trust. I will rejoice, even in the worst possible situations. So, so he resets. So if, if we find ourselves worried about relationships or money or, or anything, we, we, we reset by going back to those basic truths. I will trust God to be the provider. I will trust God in these challenges. I will trust God in these situations and so that I can rejoice moving forward. I, I reset my heart every morning. This is my, my it's, it's a game changer, right? I reset my heart every morning. Every morning I attempt to win the war of my mind for the day. Whatever stresses, whatever anxieties, or whatever, I, I lay them before Jesus, and I, and I return to faith. So, Because I, 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 I want to walk into the day with joy and peace. This morning, I was up earlier than, norm, than, than my alarm went off, and I'm sitting there on the sofa at 5.45, and I, before I even get my message out, I'm just going, Jesus, I choose joy today. I choose faith today. And I just go through making sure that there's not a shred of fear or doubt or stress. And, and I, instead I get to walk, walk into this day uh, full, of, full of joy and, and faith and confidence. That's number three, reset. And then fourthly, I resume. Resume. I just step forward in faith. I, I, I've crossed from hoping to believing. I, I've crossed from knowing with my mind to believing with my heart, and I know that I believe in my heart when worries and anxieties and stresses and fears go, go way down. That's, that's how I know that I'm believing what I believe. That's going down, and instead actual peace and joyful anticipation even of what God is going to do or how he's going to intervene or help, that is going to go up. By the way, Faith feels like peace. Faith feels like peace. Do I, do I have real faith at this moment? 
do you feel peace? Faith feels like peace. You, you know you're believing, you know you have the shield of faith up when you feel peace. Ephesians 6.16 said, In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The enemy wants to blow up your life any way he can, but you can become nearly immune to being blown up by him by taking up faith in every situation. Peace, friends. God will see you through. The challenge for today is this. I want you to take your biggest stress situations, and I want you to work through these four steps to take up faith in your more stressful situations. I want you to rebuke. I want you to remember. I want you to re reset. And I want you to resume until you feel peace. Take those situations. Do this. We don't, wanna, we don't want the door, the door wide open for the enemy to blow up our lives. So we're going to shut that door by taking up the shield of faith in every situation. I want to pray for us. I want to pray for us. And, it, and if you just close your eyes with me for a moment. I want to just start by just having this moment where you take your situation and you just hand it to Jesus. So Jesus, this is, my, this is my stress point. This is robbing my joy today. This is robbing my, my peace today. Jesus, look at this situation. Intervene. Act. Jesus, some of your titles include Prince of Peace. And you are constantly speaking peace over the people that you encounter in the Gospels. Your, your disciples, your apostles, after you are continually writing about peace, being peace over people. God, I just, I, I bless everyone who hears my words right now with a great increase in, in peace. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Let the Spirit come and bring peace in every heart and mind. A peace that guards hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You can be trusted in our situations, God. And we choose to trust you. Just bless us with peace. In Jesus' name, amen.